welcome to the lecture on the course descriptive statistics with our software you may recall that uh, when we started the the topics of descriptive statistics we have taken several aspects one option was the central tendency of the data which we have discussed in the last couple of lectures now we will aim to discuss the topic of uh, variation in data so now the first question comes what is this variation why it is important how it is useful what type of information it is going to give us and what are the different quantitative measures of such variations so in this lecture we will try to develop the concept need requirement of having the measures of variation and we will discuss three possible measures in this lecture range interquartile range and uh, quartile deviation so let us start our discussion uh, you have seen that whenever we have the data we simply want to dig out the information contained inside the data and as we had discussed the data itself cannot tell you that i have these properties so in the last couple of lectures we have concentrated on the central tendency of the data and we have seen that those measures of central tendency gives us an idea about the location where most of the data is concentrated what does this mean means if i have uh, suppose this data which i am trying to plot here through a graphical measure and suppose if i say here like this is my x axis y axis so i can see here that this data is concentrated somewhere here so this is trying to give us the information about that where this where all this data is concentrated but there is another thing you can see here that there is a deviation between the center point and those individual points and some points are close to the center and some points are are away from the center so if i say here that suppose i have here these two types of data sets and suppose the scales are the same on y and x axis and so scales on the x and y axis they are the same so there is no issue now one data is here like this and another data here is like this so you can see here in this case the most of the data is again concentrated over here but these deviations that means the difference between point and this center point or where will the mean is located this is changing and you can see here that in the first figure this region is of this type and in this another figure this region is of bigger shape so what i can see here that there can be two different uh, data sets which may have the same mean for example here in this case the mean is here and this is the mean is here so i'm assuming that this point on the x axis suppose here is mu and here mu which is the denoting the mean suppose but the spread of the values around the mean is different and similarly i can take any other point instead of uh, mean also so now what we can see from these two figures that there can be two different data sets which have got the same arithmetic mean but they may have different concentrations around mean now the question is this from the graphics i can show you that there are two desert set, uh, data sets in which the individual observations are scattered around the central point in a different way graphically i can view it but now the question is how to quantify it for example i can take here a simple example to explain you that what type of information is conveyed by the measures of variations 
Suppose there are three cities and we have measured the temperature with the other temperature in those cities on six days. And you can see here those temperature in degrees centigrade are recorded here in this table. So now please try to have a look on the data that is given inside this table. So here I am taking here three cities, city 1, city 2, city 3. And in the rows we have here different days, days 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you try to observe in the city number here 1, you can see here this temperature here is 0 on the day 1, temperature on the day 2 is 0, the temperature on the day 3 is 0 and the same temperature continues for all the 6 days. So now in this case, if you try to find out the mean of these observation, mean of these temperature, this will come out to be 0. So what we can see here that the arithmetic mean of the temperatures of the city 1 is 0. Now similarly in case if you try to observe in the city number 2, first 3 values that means the temperature on the first 3 days is minus 15. And the temperature in the day 4, 5 and 6, this is plus 15. Once again, in case if you try to find out here the average, so this will come out to be sum of minus 15, minus 15, minus 15, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15 divided by 6 and this will again come out to be 0. So in this case also this x bar is coming out to be 0. So now you can see here there are two cities, cities 1 and cities 2 in which the arithmetic mean is coming out to be the same 0, 0. But in case if you try to look into the data say here, 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 here and here. Do you think that the data in the city 1 which is all 0 and the data in the city 2 are they the same? The answer is no. They are different but uh, somehow their arithmetic mean is coming out to be 0. Now in case if you try to observe in the data in the city number 3, you can see here on day 1, city 3 has temperature 11, day 2 9, day 3 10, day 4 8, day 5 12, day 6 10. And now in case if you try to find out the arithmetic mean of these temperatures like 11 plus 9 plus 10 plus 8 plus 12 plus 10 divided by 6 this will come out to be 10. So the arithmetic mean of the temperature in 33 is coming out to be 10. So now you can see here in this case the temperatures are little bit different than in compared to the city 1 and city 2. So you can see here in these three cities I have artificially taken three different types of data sets and I am trying to find out their arithmetic mean. What you have to notice that the arithmetic means in the city 1 and city 2 they are the same but their data values are trying to show us a different information. Now can I say that since the mean temperature in city 1 and city 2 are the same as 0, so the pattern of the temperature in both the cities are the same. Why? Because city 2 has, an, has a peculiar characteristic that it has the temperature on two extreme, minus 15 degrees centigrade and 15 degrees centigrade. Whereas in the city 1, the temperature is, city 1, the temperature is actually constant, it is always 0. Whereas in the city 2, yes, there is some variation in the data. Now, in case if you try to look into the data of city 3, this also has some variation in the 
data. But now in case if you try to look at the temperature patterns of these three cities, what do you think? Can I say that the, that the information provided by the security three temperature is more reliable? Now, let us have to see whether this statement is right or wrong. So, first let me try to plot this data on a simple graph and let us try to see what a type of information I am going to get. Well, that is a very simple plot and uh, I will show you later on that how to plot this type of data in R software. But if you try to see here in that city number 1, this temperature is constant. 0 means all these dots are denoting the temperature on day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5 and day 6 and it is here 0. Similarly, in the city 2, you can see here there are 2 values here minus 15 and plus 15 and there are 3 observations on days 1, 2 and 3 which are the same minus 15 and there are 3 temperatures on day 4, day 5 and day 6, they are also plus 15 and they are the same. But can you see the pattern in figure 1 and figure 2 and you can see here that the average value will be somewhere here at about 0 in both the cases here. But if you try to see such a diagram for 33, so on day 1 this is trying to show that the temperature is 11, day 2 it is 9, day 3 it is 10 and so on. So if you try to see here this pattern, do not you see that the points here are scattered in different places. For example, you can see here this, this, this in the figure number 1, figure number 2 and figure number 3, right, yeah, what this point should be here, right. So, you can see here and the mean value is somewhere here. So, now our objective is very simple. We have understood that the mean value is giving us some information and uh, the variation in the values is giving us different type of information. So, from graphics I can see it, but I would like to quantify it. So, now the next question is how to get it done. So, I can see here that the location measures, location means the central tendency, I will say in simple language. The measures of central tendency are not enough to describe the behavior of the data. The, there is another aspect, the concentration of data or the dispersion of data around any particular value. This is another characteristic of the data that we would like to study. And now the question is how to capture this variation. And in order to capture this variation, various statistical measures of variation or dispersion are available. Now, we are going to say that what is the means how to use it, what is the interpretation and how to implement these tools on the R software. These are the three objectives in this lecture. Okay. So, now let me try to show you here a simple graph. So, here you can see here I have made here two types of dots in this picture here. One here is in green color like as here and another here is in red colors which are concentrated somewhere around this. So, these are two data sets and I have simply plotted the scatter plot. You can see here in both the cases the arithmetic mean is going to be somewhere here, but you can see here that the data set in green color that is more close to the central value which is here and whereas the data in the red color that is more scattered from the center of the data. So, I can see here that in the case of green dots, the variation is only up to this point and whereas, in case of uh, say red dots, 
this variation is going up to this point. So, this orange color pen and then this blue color pen they are trying to give us the idea of the scatteredness of the data. So, I would try to now devise some tools which can measure this scatteredness or this concentration that which data is more concentrated around the central mean or which data is more scattered around the mean or say the mean is the general consideration otherwise I can measure it around any particular value also. Now, I am going to address one simple issue before going further. Sometimes people do ask me that they have got uh, two different data sets and they have got the same variation. Is it possible that they also have the same mean? So, I am just trying to uh, create here two different data set hyp I means hypothetical uh, graphics to show you the answer. The answer is this by looking at the variation of the data you cannot really uh, comment on the central tendency of the data and vice versa. For example, in this in the last slide we have seen that there are two data set which have got the same mean, but they have got different variation. Now, I will try to show you that I have got two data set which have got the same variation, but they have got different means. Okay. Now, if you try to see here, I have taken here two data sets, one in denoted by red dots and another by green dots. Well, I have prepared it by hand, so essentially I have tried to make it very similar. So, you can see here the mean in the data set 1 is somewhere here and the mean in the data set is somewhere here and here is our x axis and here is our y axis. So, you can see here that the variability in both the cases this is the same nearly the same means I have tried to make it as close as possible graphically but they have got different mean. The mean of first data set is here calling as mean 1 and the data set 2 has a mean 2. So, you can see here even if the two data sets have got the same variability, but they can have different means. Usually, you will see that the spread or scatteredness or concentration that can be measured around any particular point, but we will see that uh, measuring this concentration or spread around the mean value and uh, particularly the arithmetic mean this is more preferable. And there is a statistical reason actually that when we try to measure some measures like is variance standard deviation around the arithmetic mean then they have got certain statistical advantages. Uh, definitely this is not really the platform or this is not really the course where uh, I can really explain you the advantages of uh, using arithmetic mean, but uh, as I go further in the lectures I will try to show you that uh, what is the most uh, preferable location with respect to the given tool around which we should measure the variability. Okay. So, now we have uh, understood that uh, different measures of uh, variations or different measures of dispersions, they help in measuring the spread and scatteredness of the data around any point and preferably the arithmetic mean value. Now, there are different types of measures which are available in statistics. There is a long list, but I will try to take care some of them in the given time and those things which I can show you easily on the R software. So, I will try it. So, there are different measures like as range, interquartile range, quartile deviation, absolute mean deviation, variance, standard deviation and there are some graphical things also and there is a long list. So, I will try to consider here these many measures in this lecture and the forthcoming lectures and I will try to show you that how to measure them on the R software also. So, now what I will do I will try to take these measures one by one and I will have uh, several questions to, to answer depending on the tool. First thing will be what is the definition of the measure, second thing 
will be how to compute it on the R software. Third thing will be how to interpret it. And in some of the cases, I will try to show you uh, that in case if some missing values are present in the data set, then how to handle them, how to compute the tool in the presence of some missing observation. And lastly, wherever possible, I will try to show you the tools for grouped and ungrouped data. So this uh, idea or these things will continue during the entire topics of variation in data. Okay, so now let us take the first topic here, which is here the range. So first I will assume here, and that will be valid for our all other lectures, that I have here a variable x on which we are collecting the n observations. And I am denoting it by small x1, small x2, and say small xn. For example, in case if I say x is here height, then I am trying to collect the data on the heights of say here n persons and the height of first person is denoted by small x1, height of second person is denoted by small x2 and the height of nth person is denoted by small xn. So this small x1, small x2, small xn, they are going to be some numerical values, right. So I will now say in simple words that we have a set of observation x1, x2, xn which is our data set. And our objective is this, how to define the tools and how to compute them using this data. The range is defined as the difference between the maximum and minimum values of the data. So it is pretty simple. Just try to find out the maximum value out of x1, x2, xn, that is the given data. Try to find out the minimum value from the given data set among x1, x2, xn and just try to find out the difference between the two. And this will give us the value of the range. So this is pretty simple actually. Now the question is this, once you get the range, then how do you interpret it? So the rule is pretty simple. The data set having higher value of range has more variability. So I can say one thing that if you have got more than one data sets and if you want to measure the variability in terms of range, then what we have to do? Just try to find out the ranges of all the data sets, try to compare them and whosoever range is coming out smallest, the corresponding data set will be thought to have a, a smaller variability. So, I can say now here that the data set which is having the lower value of range is preferable. And in case if we have two data set and suppose the ranges are represented by range 1 and say here range 2, then if range 1 is greater than range 2, then we say that the data set of range 1 is having more variability than the data in the data set of range 2. One thing I would like to make it clear uh, that we are going to discuss different types of tools, range, inter quartile uh, deviation, quartile uh, deviation, uh, absolute mean deviation, variance, standard deviation and so on. So whenever we are trying to measure the variability, then we are trying to make such decision only with respect to that measure. Now if I say that suppose you have two data sets and you try to find out the range of one data sets and say standard deviation of say another data set. Now if you try to compare the range of first data set and the variance or the standard deviation of the second data set, that may not be appropriate. So my advice is that whenever you want to compare the variability try to use the same tool and then you try to make an intercomparison. Now I am coming on the aspect that how to compute the range 
in the R software. So, I will denote here by this x the data vector that whatever are the data values they are contained here like c x 1 x 2 see here x n. Now, you know as we have defined the range here the range has been defined as maximum value minus the minimum value. So, what I can do here that I can use the built in commands in the R software to find out the maximum value and the minimum value that we had discussed in the earlier lectures. So, the maximum value of x 1, x 2, x n is going to be computed by max of x, max and inside the argument you have to give the data vector and the minimum value of x 1, x 2, x n is going to be computed by the command m i n and inside the argument you have to give the data and then you try to find out the difference between the two. So, max of x minus min of x. Now, suppose uh, it happens that x has some missing values and they are denoted by capital N capital A N A and suppose I try to store this data into another data vector say x N A. So, x N A is my another data vector which has got some missing values. So, in case if you want to compute the range of such a data vector where the values are missing, you simply have to use the same command max and min, but inside the argument you have to give the data in this format x n a the data vector in which you have got some missing values and you have to use the command n a dot r m is equal to logically true that is capital T, capital R, capital U, capital E. So, what will happen that once you try to operate the max command on this vector, this data set, then it will try to remove the missing value and then it will try to compare how to compute the maximum value. And similarly, when we try to use the m i n minimum command on this data vector, then when we specify n a dot r m is equal to true, then this operator will remove the missing values from this vector x n a, which are denoted by capital N capital A and then after that it will try to compute the minimum value. So, this is how you have to compute the range in case some data is missing. One thing which I would like to caution you here, as you have seen in the R software we have the names of the function which are, are uh, giving a value which is easily understood by the name like as mean, mean means the arithmetic mean of the data vector, median which is trying to give the median of the data vector. Similarly, when you try to use here the command range R A and G E, then it appears that as if this is going to give me the value of the range that is maximum value minus minimum value, but it does not happen. Range will try to give you the two values, the range command will give you two values. One is the maximum value of the data vector and another is the minimum value out of those data inside the data vector. So, be careful. So, here I would like to make here a note of caution that if you try to use the command R A and G E, then this will return a vector containing the minimum and maximum values of the given argument. So, just be careful and if you recall the same thing happened in the case of mode also. M O D E that was trying to give some other information, but by name it appears that as if this is going to give me the value corresponding to the maximum frequency. So, similar is the case with range. So, you need to be careful. Now, after this I will try to take an example and I will try to show you that how to compute the range on the given set of data. So, I will take the same example which I have given. Uh, or which I have used in the earlier lectures. So, I have computed the or I have observed the time taken by 20 participants in a race and they are given in seconds over here like this and this data is recorded inside a variable here time. So, this is my here the data vector 
and now I am simply trying to execute the R command maximum time minus minimum time and I can see here that this is giving me the value here 52 and you can um, also verify it from the given set of data. For example, here you can see here this is here the maximum value and this is here the minimum value. So, if you try to subtract it here 84 minus 32 you get the value equal to 52. Just to show you what will be the command or what will be the outcome of the command range then you can see here this is giving me two different values. This is here the minimum value of time and this is 84 is the maximum value in the data given inside the time in data vector. Right. So, before I try to show you on the R console, let me try to give you one more example and then I will come back. And here in this slide you can see here the screenshot on the R console. And uh, now what I am trying to show you in the same example if the data values are missing then how you are going to handle it. So, in the same example where we have recorded the time taken by 20 participants in a race, I have made these first two values to be an A. That means, they are not available and all other values are the same. So, now I am trying to record this data inside a new variable that is time dot n a. So, time dot n a is simply indicating that the data is not available inside the time vector. Right, and uh, there is no rule that uh, that you always have to use here the point or dot. That is your choice. So I have stored this data, and now I'm trying to find out the maximum value of this time n a minus minimum value of the time n a. But now, if you see, this will give me a output like n a. Why? Because I have not used here the command n a dot r m is equal to true. So I try to correct myself, and I try to uh, find out the maximum and minimum on the data set time dot n a using the command that n a dot r m is equal to true. So, as soon as we give n a dot r m is equal to true, this will understand the maximum command will understand that there are some missing values in the time dot n a which have to be removed before computing the maximum. And the same thing will happen here, this minimum command will understand that uh, the first the n a values or the missing value have to be removed and this value comes out to be here 49. Right. So, now I will try to show you here uh, on the R console and you can see here this is the data, uh, this is the screenshot of the operation on the R console. So, let me try to first copy this data set, see here time and I try to put it here time. So, you can see here this is my here the data time. So, now suppose if you uh, say by mistake if you try to operate the command range, you can see here this will come out to be 3284 that is the same outcome that we had received. Right. But if you try to find out the maximum of time minus minimum of time, you can see here you are getting the this value which is the value of the range. And similarly, if you try to remove the missing data, then how to operate it? So, I try to create here, say here another data vector time dot n a. So, you can see here, I have created this data vector here time dot n a in which the first two values are missing. And suppose if I try to find out here the range of time dot n a, this will give me a, there is something wrong. So, I try to use here the command n a dot r m is equal to true. I mean now it will give me the minimum and maximum values. But my objective is not to find the minimum and maximum value, I want to find out the maximum and minimum values and I want to find out their difference. So, I will say here time dot n a and when n a dot r m is equal to true minus the minimum of time dot n a n a dot 
R m is equal to true. Now, if you try to see here, you will get here the value 49. But in case if you by mistake, if you do not give the command N A dot R m is equal to true, then you can see the outcome will be N A. Now, after this, I come on at this another topic, which is the interquartile range. Just like range is trying to measure the difference between the maximum and minimum values. Similarly, we have another measure what is called as interquartile range. And interquartile range simply tries to measure the difference between the third and first quartiles. Now, you may recall what was the quartile? If you try to recall, then we had discussed that in case if uh, we have the frequency distribution like this one, then this frequency distribution is divided into four equal parts. And the first 25 percent of the frequency is covered in the first quartile denoted as Q 1. Next 25 percent of the frequency is contained between Q 1 and Q 2. So, essentially Q 2 is trying to consider the total 50 percent of the frequency. So, this is the median and similarly we had here Q 3 and finally here Q 4. So, now what I try to do here that I try to take here Q 1, Q 2 and Q 3, Q 2 is the median and I try to consider this area. So, you can see here that this area is consisting of 25 percent of the total frequency and this area is consisting of the another 25 percent of the frequency. So, the area between Q 1 and Q 2 is 25 percent of the total frequency and the area between Q 2 and Q 3 is 25 percent of the total frequency. So, all together if you try to add it together, then this entire area which I am denoting by here dots, this is going to take care of the 50 percent of the total frequency. So, the interquartile range is defined as the difference between the 75th and 25th percentiles or equivalently this is nothing but the third and first quartile. So, this is denoted by here I Q R is equal to Q 3 minus Q 1. Right, And as I have shown you in this uh, figure here that this I Q R or the interquartile range covers the center of the distribution and contains 50 percent of the observations. So, now how to make the decision making? Once again the rule is the same. The data set having the higher value of interquartile range has more variability that will be the interpretation. So, obviously, we would always like to have a data set which has got the smaller variability. So, the data set with lower value of interquartile range is more preferable. So, suppose if I have got two data sets and suppose their interquartile ranges are computed as IR1 and IR2. So, if IR1 is greater than IR2, then we say that the data in IR1 is more variable or has more variability than the data in IR2. So, this is our interpretation. So, now with the, these two examples, you can see here that range and interquartile range, they are both of them are trying to measure the same aspect of the data that is the variation, but they are doing in a different way. Right. Now, how to compute it on the R software? This is pretty simple. There are two ways, either you can write your own program or just use the uh, command to compute the quartiles and try to find out their difference or there is a built in command in R software to find out the interquartile range. So, if I say that my data vector here is x which is consisting of here say observation x 1, x 2, x n what we had uh, assume then the interquartile range is computed by the command i q r and inside the argument you have to give the data vector. And in case if the data vector has some missing values which are denoted by here x n a, then the command will be modified as i q r of x n a, if the command 
na dot rm is equal to true. Now, with this thing, uh, I would like to introduce one more measure that is called as quartile deviation. This quartile deviation and interquartile range both are very closely related to each other. And after this, I will try to show you how to compute it on the R software. Okay. So, this quartile deviation is another measure to find out the variability in the data. And this is defined as the half difference between the 75th and 25th percentiles or the half difference between the third and first quartile. So, this is essentially half of the value of the interquartile range. So, half of the interquartile range is called as quartile deviation. So, it is not really difficult to give the definition of the quartile deviation. We simply have to take the difference between Q3 minus Q1, which is nothing but your interquartile range, and you have to divide it by 2, which I am doing here. So, this is nothing but the half of the interquartile range. And the decision making in this case is the same as in the case of interquartile range. The data set having a higher value of quartile deviation is uh, said to have more variability. Right. Now, in case if you want to compute the quartile deviation on the R software, it is pretty simple. You already have learned how to compute the interquartile range. So, you simply have to write down the same command and divide it by 2. And suppose if the data vector has some missing values, then again just write the same command defined for the interquartile range in the case of missing data and divide it by 2. So, this command will give you the value of the quartile deviation. Now, I will try to take an example to show you how to compute these things and then I will try to show you on the R console also. So, again I am going to take the same example where I have stored the data on the time of uh, 20 participants. Now, if I simply try to operate here the command IQR inside the argument time, this will give me the value of the interquartile range and this value comes out to be here 27. And similarly, if I want to find out the quartile deviation, I simply have to write down IQR of time, the same command which I have used here and just divide it by 2. So, this value will come out to, to be 13.5 and uh, this is here the, the screenshot of the operation. And now, I will try to show you first that how you are going to handle the missing value. So, once again, I will try to take the same example which I have taken earlier that in the time data, the first two values have been replaced by Na. So, they are representing the missing values and these missing values have been uh, uh, given inside the data vector time dot Na. Now, after this, in case if you simply try to put here IQR of time dot Na, so obviously this is going to give you an error because there are missing values. So, what you have to do? In case if you want to compute the interquartile range, then give IQR as the command, the data containing the missing value time dot Na and write the command Na dot RM is equal to true. So, this is going to tell this time dot Na that when we are trying to compute IQR, then first the missing values have to be removed. So, this value comes out to be 25.25 and if you try to find out the quartile deviation, just try to use the same command here and divide it by 2. So, this will give you the value of interquartile range. So, I will try to now show you this thing on the R console. So, you can see here you already have the data entered here time. So, I will say here IQR of time. This is coming out to be 27 and if you want to find out the interquartile deviation, you just divide it by 2. This will come out to be like this. You see, what happens if I try to use the small cutters I, IQR? This will give me a mistake. So, what you have to keep in mind that IQR command is case sensitive. The small IQR and say capital IQR, these are different thing. Right. And uh, similarly, if I try to, to take the data on the missing values time dot Na. So, this is my data vector. Now, if I want to find out the IQR of this time dot Na. So, I try to do it here without giving the argument Na dot Rm is equal to true and you can see here this gives me a mistake. 
So I try to add here the command that na dot rm is equal to true and you get here this value and if you want to find out the the IQ are divided by 2, the quartile deviation. So, you have to simply divide the interquartile range by 2 and this gives me the value here 12.625. Okay, so, in this lecture, I have given you a concept of variation in data and I have introduced two measures which are based on certain values. For example, range is based on two values, minimum and maximum and quartile deviation, they are or interquartile range, both are based on two values, first quartile and third quartile. So, at this moment, I would request you, you please try to go through with the lecture, take some example and practice them on the R software try to make different experiment, try to get the values and try to see that how the values which you have obtained for range and uh, interquartile range, they are going to give what type of information which is contained inside the data. So, you practice it and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.